When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Can the God whose hand has formed the sun and the moon and the stars, whose almighty power holds the rolling spheres in place, can he be concerned about the lives of little men? Can the sovereign of the silent spheres reach down into the lives of men to bring light into their darkness, to proclaim freedom from their fears, and to fill their hearts with the strength of his divine assurance? From the trackless realm beyond the stars, we take our downward flight, and out of all of Earth's billions, we pick one single solitary man, a little man, a lonely man. It might be word from your folks in the old country. Maybe after the war they're found safe. all morning? Mrs. Cooley, something has happened. I don't know what to do. I have to talk to somebody. Didn't you hear me? There's no hot water in the bathroom. Miss Manley, maybe you can help me. I will not tolerate being made late for church. Please. Miss Manley, Mrs. Cooley, if you could only tell me what to do. Someone must know. Somebody can help. I have to talk to somebody. Please, mister, could you... Please, mister, I... I'm wanted... sorry, buddy. I'm a stranger here myself. young man. Ought to peep the entire service. I guess he liked the sermon. You mean it put him to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Morning, Pastor. Good morning, Walt. I'm glad to hear that Mrs. Graves will be up and about soon. Thank you. Sermon sure struck home today. Made you want to walk right out and share your faith with everybody you meet. Why, thank you, Walt. You were right, Pastor. Made me feel guilty. I guess none of us is doing as much about this each one reach one business as we should. That's a good thought, Bill. Hold on to it. Pastor, I must say your sermon was very inspiring. You're right. We ought to hire a lot more missionaries to go out and bring the people in. But that wasn't quite the idea, Sophie. It's our job, each one of us. Will you excuse me a minute? I... Pastor! Oh, good morning, Edgar. Pastor, does each one reach one mean kids, too? It sure does, Edgar. I want to ask you about the flowers for next Sunday. The aphids have got into my chrysanthemums, and I... You'll have to excuse me a minute, Mrs. Graham. I... There's a stranger that I... Do. Oh, but it won't take a minute. Fran, Fran, wait. Wait for me. God forgive us. Better not move him, Bert. His back may be broken. Call an ambulance. Has anyone ever seen him before? He's a human being with a soul. And you don't need a formal introduction to that. But whoever he is, he needed something. And he needed it desperately. We could have helped him, but we turned him away. God forgive us. We 
might at least turn off your motor. You'll need nothing to worry about, Miss Bradley. The guy was a jaywalker, all right. And if you'll have your father call the commissioner, there'll be no need for you to appear. It's uh, too bad you've had this annoying delay. Now, I suppose you've done everything that could be expected of you. From the way the cop tipped his cap to you, I expect there's a fat family checkbook back of you, so you needn't have a thing on your conscience. Now, you can get onto your golf. I do hope this annoying little incident hasn't uh, upset your game. Dinner's almost ready. Did they like your sermon? Was it the Catholic baby that cried during the prayer? And did Sophie Manley doze off again? I thought I saw her feather bobbing. Did they like my sermon? Was it the Kessner baby? Did Sophie Manley? Ella, is that all you can think about? Sometimes I wonder whether you should have become a pastor's wife. Where were you when... Ella, you were there. You saw it all. How can you toss off that terrible thing like a, a button in the collection? Well, you had to get mad at somebody. And I thought it had better be me. You always know, don't you? Yes, dear. But Ella, what's the matter with me? What's the good of preaching? I slaved over that sermon, but what did I make it mean to them? Just another passage from the Bible, in one ear and out the other. How can I make them really hear? Ye shall be witnesses unto me. Each one reached one. I wanted that message to burn into their souls. I wanted them to do something about it. Well, they all said, that was a nice sermon. I liked your sermon, Pastor. But when the first need walked up and pushed itself into our faces, I failed. Ella, what am I going to do? You're not going to do anything right now. God will take care of things in his own way. And I think he's got the situation well in hand. I don't know what the world is coming to. I don't see why they can't keep skirts the same length for just a month or two. Oh, Madeline, you're back early. What happened to your golf? I thought you wouldn't be back until six. What happened? Max, come in here. Why, darling, you look as though you've been shell-shocked. What's wrong? What happened? I thought I'd never get home. I ran over a man. I looked off the road to wave, and when I looked back, and he tried to die, I thought it's all my fault. Now, pull yourself together, Chick. Nothing's going to happen to you. It's not me. It's... Oh, Dad, if you could have seen it. I looked off the road for a second, and when I looked back, I tried to stop as soon as I could, but... And there he was, at the back of the car, crumpled. He was a poor, shabby little man, and... It's all my fault. What can I do to make up for it, Dan? What are you knocking yourself out for, sis? Pop will fix it up. I'll have the insurance company pay his hospital bills and get a quick settlement out of him. Better phone right away. That kind will sue you blind. But where did it happen? In front of that church at the corner of Elm Street. I guess he was just coming out. Church, huh? That's murder on a jury. If she'd been in church where the lot of us belong, it wouldn't have happened. Well, that's superstition. 
If she'd been on time at the country club, it wouldn't have happened either. Look, I had church pushed down my throat three times every Sunday and twice a week when I was a kid. And no child of mine is going to have to go through that. I'm going down to the hospital myself, right now. I've got to see that he has the right care. Okay, Chick. Have it your way. I'll give you a blank check for the hospital. I'll stand good for whatever you need. That family checkbook. No, Dan. You didn't run this man down. I did. And for the first time in my life, I I've done something I've got to pay for myself. Money won't make up for it. But at least I'll feel better if I can earn his care. All right. Come on downtown and go to work in the office. As a matter of fact, I could really use you. We're starting to figure our bids on the viaduct job in a few days. Give you whatever you need. Thanks, Dan. But it would still be the fat family checkbook. Maybe I'm growing up or something, but this has got to come out of me. I'm going to the hospital. That was the second time she said something about a fat family checkbook. That's not like her. Max, do you suppose the police were hard on her? The cops? Get tough with one of Pops, kids? Ha! Mr. Starling's blood is the right type. There's nothing you folks can do now. How is he, nurse? Is he going to make it? I hope so. Just make yourself comfortable, Mr. Starling. We'll call you when we're ready. And Bell, you'll let me know as soon as he's conscious. Well, sure. is a small world. Now, what could possibly bring you to an unpleasant place like this? There isn't even a golf course here. Money, of course. That kind will sue you blind. What are you so nervous about? You'd be nervous, too, if you just run down a man. What? Well, I think it made any difference to you. I don't blame you for thinking that. But if I'd said a single word in front of the church, I'd have fallen apart. How is he? We'll soon know. Everything possible is being done. You know, uh, I, I wouldn't have said this a few minutes ago, but what happened there at the church? That wasn't your fault. He stepped off the curb right in front of you. But I wasn't looking. I needn't have hit him. Nobody knows that. I do. Well, at least I can make arrangements to pay for his bills. Oh, I'm not buying my way out of trouble. I've got to do it. I've got to earn the money myself. I can't fall back on that you mentioned. Don't rub it in. Uh, and don't get sore, but, you know, you're not the picture of a working girl. Oh, I'm not as helpless as you think. College vacations, I used to help out in my dad's office. He's a contractor, Max Bradley. Do you know him? <laughs> well, it is a small world at that. No wonder we didn't get along well at first. We we're competitors. I'm a construction superintendent for Walt Graves. You probably heard your father speak of him. Walt Graves? Why, I've known him since I was a kid. You don't suppose that... Suppose what? Oh, nothing. Uh, just a thought. So you don't think I look like a working girl? We're ready for the transfusion now, Mr. Starling. By the way, have you Sophie Manley's telephone number? Her blood is the right type, too. If it will only melt. Keeps the place like a pig pen. Manly, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. It's about time you started doing a little thinking about people less fortunate than yourself. Charity begins at home, you know, even in a boarding house. Stop that racket! I guess I've had enough rent to be entitled to a little peace and quiet on my one day away from the office. Come clean, Maddie. What do you want? You know perfectly well if I've got it, you can get it out of me. Well, I did sort of have my eye on that nice-looking young superintendent of yours. Uh, what's his Mr., um, uh... You know perfectly well what his name is. If you ever do make up your mind you'd like to take action on Bill Starling, you certainly won't come around asking me. Now, 
What's on your mind? Oh, it's so ridiculous, Uncle Walt. I realized at the moment I came in, but, well, as Dad says, business is business, and uh, something happened, and I've got to earn some money of my own. Not Dad's for a change. It's a, well, sort of a personal obligation. Heard about that. Bill told me. You're acting like I always hoped you would someday. Well, maybe you've come to the right place. I've got to take on a temporary girl to help Sophie on the viaduct figuring. You can run a calculator, can't you? Oh, sure, but Uncle Wallet's so silly. Your figures are confidential. Dad's going to figure the job, too, and, and if I were to tell him the price you were going to put in, why, he could underbid you and get the job himself. Would you? Would I what? Betray my figures if I were trusting you? Of course I wouldn't. But nobody'd be so silly as to trust the daughter of his bitterest competitor. Had your lunch, Madeline? Yes. Well, then what are you waiting for? Take off your coat and go to work. <coughs> Sophie, you can come in now. Walter Graves, you must be out of your mind. Sophie, you know uh, Madeline badly, don't you? Yes, I know her, and I know her father, too. And I'd like You'd to... You'd like to fix Madeline up with a desk and give her the survey on the viaduct location. Madeline's one of the family now. Which family? Graves or Bradley? Walter Graves, if you want to know what I think, I... Why, of course I know what you think, Sophie. You're thinking that charity begins at home. And it's kind of nice to bring a little to business now and then. Anything you need, Maddie, Sophie will see you get it. Okay? I... Thanks, Uncle Walt. He won't wake up for hours, sir. He got so frantic this afternoon, we had to give him a sedative. What upset him? I guess it was the cablegram. He took one look at it and... Another cable? Might I see it? Perhaps I could help. It's against the regulations. Yes, of course. But we can't very well do anything until we know what's wrong. Now, isn't there any way that you... I'm sorry, sir. If I were to see you looking under his pillow, on the left side, I should certainly have to report it. I understand, nurse. Thank you. Thank you very much. Poor fellow. Carrying quite a burden, aren't you? Well, maybe we can share a little of it with you. I'm sorry I couldn't oblige, sir. I know. You have your duty. Telephone me when he can have visitors. A lot of our people will want to see him. He means a good deal to us. I didn't think we'd see you at choir practice, Sophie. Last night was the first Thursday night in a long time you didn't show up to work on the church records. Nothing wrong, I hope. No, nothing wrong. Why, Sophie, you're blushing. Now, don't tell me you were out doing the town with a new bow. You're mighty close. It's a new bow, all right. Pretty cute, too. Now, you keep quiet, Dorothy Graham. Of course, Sophie, I thought he was a little young for you. He's three months old. Oh, <laughs> <what do you laughs> Looks as though Sophie's launched an H1 Reach 2 program. This young couple in her boarding house have a sickly baby, cries a lot, and keeps them tied down. So when I went by to pick up Sophie, there she was, minding the baby so the young folks could come to membership class. <laughs> no more than I should do. Not a yip out of him all night, either. All he needed was just some old-fashioned rocking to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> just a minute before you leave, please. I stopped at the hospital right after supper, and the doctors think our stranger has an even chance to recover. Oh. We shall all keep praying for him. But I've learned something that indicates God intends to answer some of those prayers through us. The stranger came to us because he was in desperate trouble. He was separated from his family because of the war. And they were on their way to him when his wife died. That was the news that came to him last Sunday morning. But his child lived, and she's on her way to this country right now, as we're talking. Sophie tells me he has no work and no place to take care of his little girl. Now, I've got an idea about some work for him, and as for the home, well, maybe there's a chance here for all of us to reach one. Anybody got any ideas? 
It's not too easy, Pastor. There are not many places for rent. Well, a hall bedroom in that boarding house is no place to bring up a little girl. But I... Bert, you look as if you had an idea. No. Come on, don't be bashful. Let's have it. Well, I, I don't know if this will help much, but... Well, I, I was raised on a farm, and when some young folks would get married or somebody's barn had burned down or something like that, why, we'd all kind of get together and have a barn raising bee. Bert, you're wonderful. Look, oh. everybody. You know that old stable in back of my house? Well, it has a two-room apartment over it where Grandfather's coachman used to live. Of course, it's crammed with trunks and rubbish now, and it's filthy and dirty, but that's where the barn raising comes in. We'll all pitch in and clean it up and paint it. And we got an old gas stove down in our cellar. I'll throw in the plumbing fixtures. Bill Starling will do the hauling in one of the company trucks. Well, we seem to be on our way. And Bert, you're going to suffer the fate of every man who thinks of a good idea. I'm going to put you in charge of it. Oh. Now, we have about a month before the child gets here, and maybe by that time we can pay off some installments on the debts we owe our friend. Thank you for staying. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. our humble gratitude for the new spirit which has become evident in the hearts of thy people. Truly thou dost move in a mysterious way thy wonders to perform. Thou hast sent this stranger into our midst to warm our hearts and to open the hands of charity. Lord, I come to thee with the burden of this stranger upon my heart. Keep him in thy loving arms. Let him come again to the door of thy house and let us welcome him as our brother through faith in thee. Be with us, Lord Jesus, that each one of us may reach out for the lost and the straying and bring them into the shelter of thy fold. I ask it, trusting only in thy promise. Amen. Saturdays keep rolling around. There's a payroll, Soph. Buck will give you the social security numbers for that new man. How's the tunnel going, boys? Okay. If we can ever punch through those... Doc? Those annoying cave-ins. <laughs> We're a little behind schedule now, but we may make up some time this week, huh, Buck? I'm back for the bank, Mr. Graves. How about that, Buck? Yeah, how about that? I've been waiting for Buck to catch sight of Madeline. <laughs> She's working out all right, isn't she, Walt? Fine. I'm glad. I take back what I thought about your hiring the daughter of your competitor. That's a man for you. Always taken in by a pretty face. I suppose we'll see you bring her to church next. Well, maybe you got something there, so? Well, let's get to the payroll. And then I'll go over to City Hall and pick up the bid blanks. But, baby, this is more than just a date. Where's your loyalty to the good old Graves Construction Company? How can you turn me down for a rank outsider who doesn't know a drill rig from a... Don't pole? tell me you're holding out against Buck. That's impossible. He admits it himself. If he works on his men like he does on me, he must be a wonderful foreman. Sure he is. That's why I have to let him get away with all the things he does. How about me? Take back what you said about my not looking like a working girl? No, oh, but you act like one. <laughs> what, Mr. Starling? At least I feel like a working girl. And that day off tomorrow is going to feel pretty good. That's what I was trying to tell you. What you need is a day out at the lake. Have some fun. I'll submit your offer to the board of directors. Care to top his bid, Mr. Starling? Sure. Tomorrow's Sunday. How about coming to church with me? <laughs> oh, that's wonderful, Bill. Buck, I guess he topped you. The uh, funniest part's still to come. I meant it. Well, now I've heard everything. I can think of a lot of places to take a dame, but this one stops me. Church. The Salvation Kid himself. Take it easy, bud. 
Okay. See you in church. Bill, I'm sorry I laughed. It's just that, well, maybe it's the way I was brought up. People look at things differently. I live decently. I don't need church. Pretty sure of yourself, aren't you, Madeline? Well, yes. Yeah. Nobody's that sure. I hope you don't have to find that out the hard way. Well, here's luck on the job, Max. I hope you have a second low bidder. Same to you, Walt. This one has a definite feeling of a Bradley job. Well, I've got the rush of... Uh-oh. Look at that. Look at that, and I'm late already. Cool off, Max. Got a gadget in my car I'm making for a chance to try out on somebody else's flat. Won't take a second. I think this doohickey is going to work. You'll have to start your car and back up a couple of feet. Okay. run the flat on this till you get to a garage. Hey, that's mighty white of you, Walt. There's no law that says you have to help out a competitor, you know. Sure there is. What? Don't you remember what old Mrs. Taylor used to make us recite in Sunday school? Do unto others? Oh, that. Well, it sounds nice, but it just doesn't work out in business. Might if we gave it a chance. Well, thanks again, and I'll drop this thing off at your office. Thinking of old Mrs. Taylor gave me a better idea. Why don't you drop it off at the house tomorrow morning? Say hello to Emmy, and you and Kay come down to church like we used to. But no thanks. Uh, no offense, Walt, but I just haven't got much patience with these Sunday Christians. <laughs> well, I'll take yourself, for example. I don't hold it against you. Business is business. But you hired my daughter in the hope that you'd find out the price I was going to bid on this viaduct job. Now, I'm a more honest man than you are. We're both out to do each other, only I admit it. Golly, Max, you better come to church. How does Kay feel about it? Oh, you know, Kay, she doesn't keep up with the times. Yeah, I know, Kay. You could listen to her, especially about those two swell kids of yours. You're going to have a lot of regrets. Someday. Yeah, you bet, Walt. That's right. Uh, well, I'll be seeing it. Watch, Trey. Watch, Trey. All about the cop killing. Get your paper. Paper, Mr. Newsboy, home cop killing. Oh, hello, Mr. Grace. Hello, Edgar. Hey, Mr. Brady. No, thanks. Oh, come on, Pop. Buy one. Hey, what's going on here? What are you doing selling newspapers on the street? What'll the neighbors think? Take it easy, Pop. It's letting me sell papers if I go to Sunday school with him tomorrow. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I give you all the money you need. Why on earth do you want to sell newspapers? Gives me a chance to holler. Walk, straw, walk, straw. Oh, Aren't you going to ask me how you look? You don't seem very excited about this date. Oh, I'm only going out to Johnny Putnam. Oh, of all things. For a week, you've been keeping everybody off the phone so I could call you. What's the matter, chick? Is your new job getting you down? Hmm? Are you listening? Hmm? Oh, guess I was thinking of something else. What, for goodness sake? I had a proposition made to me today. Young man at the office. It's kind of a proposition I've never come up against before. Well, I must say. Don't get excited, Mother. He asked me to go to church. Well, if you ask me, it wouldn't hurt you any. Church, eh? Walt Graves was after me this afternoon for that same thing. And they had one of their young commandos out after Junior. Dad, will you and Mother be over at the club? I doubt it. I want to work on some figures on that viaduct job. Don't be thinking those figures out loud. We're competitors now, and it's a fight to the finish, you know. As I've been meaning to mention that, Chick, uh, you know, you and I could, uh, could make a deal. If you just happen to let slip the price that Walt Graves is going to bid on that job, it might be worth that new convertible you've been wanting. Oh, you're kidding. I'm not kidding at all. I might even go for that special body job. I didn't mean that. Well, remember, all's fair in war and business. Why do you think Walt hired you? You know, Dad, I'm beginning to think you don't understand. Got your paint job done? Your boyfriend's coming up the wall. Tell him I'll be right down. Oh, Madeline, is this young man at the office, who is he? <laughs> oh, nobody, Mother. It's just that, well, I guess it's just that he doesn't kowtow to me. What you doing, 
doing, Edgar? I put one of these in all my papers. What are they? From the church. Pays to advertise, you know. Here's your pop paper. You better put in two. Pop's a hard case. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, I'm going to leave you now. This is my busy day. Every day seems the same to me here. What, what day is it? It's Sunday, my friend. <laughs> and only one hour before service. It was nice of you to come again and thank you for the Bible and the radio. Don't you even mention it. Uh... Could you maybe just spend one more minute? My, my little girl, Anna, my baby, coming here from the old country. What will I do? Now, you just don't worry about your daughter. The Lord will find a way. Just leave her in his good hands. Oh, I wish I knew how to talk to him. Well, you'll find it very easy when you know him. It's like talking to an old friend. You think he would listen to me? And help me take care of my Anna? Why, of course. You and Anna are very dear to him. He wants you to come to him for help. The Bible is full of his invitations and promises. Do you read your Bible much? No. My uh, mother used to read it to me when I was a little boy, but... When I got big, I thought I was too big for that. I didn't go to church. I didn't pray. I, I thought uh, I could take care of myself. But when this thing happened, I, I see I am not so big after all. You know, sometimes God puts us to bed to wake us up. Yes. Yes, I guess so. Lying here, I've been thinking. Pastor, you should know, my past life has been pretty bad. I think maybe God, he must be ashamed of me. But you're sorry, and that's a very good sign. We all sin, and we all must come to God daily for forgiveness. Then I was in the old country, things were hard to get, and, and I started by stealing little things, and then my wife asked me where I got them. I had to tell a lie. So I kept stealing and lying and lying and stealing until people pointed me out and called me a thief. And I had to leave the whole country. No, I guess God doesn't want people like me. He wanted the thief on the cross. He himself said, the Son of Man is come to seek and save that which is lost. And he said, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Every man who repents of his sins and believes that Jesus died on the cross in his place and suffered the punishments of his sins is free and at peace forever, no matter who he may be. No matter who? Yes, no matter who. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the Bible's promise of salvation. Is that what salvation is? It seemed to me it was just a word the people sing. Pastor, I know so little. Do you suppose someday I could join your church and learn more about God and Jesus? That is what we have been praying for. You people have been praying for me? All of us. You have no idea how much the Lord has heard about you ever since we first met. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you very much. Well, I must be running along now. But I'm going to leave a friend with you. God bless you, Pastor. You have made me feel wonderful. Like a new man. Goodbye, my friend. I'll come again in the morning. Thank you.
everybody. Oh, Dorothy. Oh, no, I still no. haven't persuaded my husband out of his Sunday tennis. Oh. But I'd like you folks to meet Selma Bates. We've been neighbors for years. How do you, how do, you do, do, Selma? How do you do? Well, we'll see you after. Bye. Bye. I wish Bert had get up enough nerve to speak to our neighbors. Well, why me? They live just as close to you. And then, then anyway, you know my tongue feels like a muff whenever I try to talk to strangers. And besides, he's so standoffish. Every time I look over toward him, he just looks the other way. Just keep looking, Bert. One of these days, you'll both forget yourselves and start talking. <laughs> <laughs> and don't you laugh at Bert, Bill Starling. I thought you were going to do some work on that construction gang of yours. Oh, those tough monkeys. I know just what Bert means. Some things are easier said than done. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, take a look. Maybe you've got a customer after all. Well, well, look who's here. This is great. Move over and I'll drive you around the parking lot. Oh, I'm not staying, Bill. You to meet Mother. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Starling? I thought I'd use Madeline's ticket. Oh, uh, fine. I'm sorry you're not coming in, too. I see you don't have your golf clubs today. No, I thought I'd do a little homework this morning. Did you jot down those equipment figures Sophie wanted? Sure. Oh, I, uh, I didn't have any blank paper handy, so I, uh... But I don't see... Oh, pretty cute, aren't you? Well, I'll read it anyway. <laughs> Madeline, I see what you mean. Now, young man, tell me about yourself. As if I didn't know. Bye, you two. Well, well. Little orphan Annie has hidden the $50,000 in her teddy bear. And the sheriff's going to put her in jail if he catches her. He'll kill her first, that is, before the house burns down. Mm. Dick Tracy's been buried in concrete and thrown in the river again. Little Annie Rooney's just been run over by a truck. Oh, oh, oh. Funny papers. All right. Yeah. I thought you were going over and... And speak to the neighbors about going to church. Yes. No. Bert, you're a coward. All right, I am a coward. How are we going to keep our child from growing up and pointing the finger of shame at you? Teach him not to point. <laughs> oh, now, now, dear, don't let's quarrel, but shucks. You can't just walk up to a total stranger and say, why don't you go to church? Well, I'll see why not. Well, because well, you, you got to kind of slide into it. Now, if he was to come over and say, let me borrow your pliers or something like that, why, well, we could get the talking and I could bring up the subject. Oh, well, I guess you're right, dear. <laughs> oh, Bert, would you... Why, of course, dear. Oh, I can't. Don't you remember? I lost my hammer. Oh. Oh, you lost your hammer. <laughs> He's got a hammer. You could go over and ask to borrow it, and you could sort of get to talking and bring up the subject and slide into it. Well, uh, uh he's not at home. Car's in the garage. Well, uh, they, they went for a walk. They, they, they must have gone for a walk. <laughs> in fact, you're practically sure they went yeah. for a walk. <laughs> Hammering? Oh, no, that was me. My foot, it went to sleep. Oh, what a shame, dear. You just sit down over here and I'll rub it for you. It happens often. Oh, oh that's a shame. All right, all right. But how do I start? You just go up to the fence and yell, you neighbor. When he looks at you, you ask him. For the hammer. No, to go to church. Remember, you who neighbor. You who. You who. Just 
you who? Just a minute. You wanted to ask me something. What was it? Uh, well, I was just going to ask you, uh, could I borrow your hammer for a minute? Oh, thanks. By the way, have you got a pair of pliers? Huh? Pliers? Oh, pliers! Oh, yeah, yeah sure, sure, you bet. I, I'll get them right away. Here, uh, don't you go away. Pliers. Right? Sure. <laughs> you know, Mr. Kessner, it's quite a coincidence you mentioning church. We almost spoke to you this morning when you got your car out. <laughs> we just wanted to ask you if we could trail along. Well, say, how about next Sunday? Well, better still, how about tonight? Yeah. Right. How about the line? <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Mr. Graves wants you to check the piling figures. Have you got a few minutes? Sure. So I'll be clearing a couple of nuts. Hi, right, boys. Where's the coke in the bucket? Any more trouble, Buck? No. Nope. That's good. That last batch set us behind schedule five days. Keep your shirt on, Bob. I'm doing better with my schedule than you're doing with yours. What do you mean by that, Crack? You ought to know. Better than a month now, you've been making a play for that new dish at the office. Where have you got? <laughs> okay, Buck, you got your laugh. You can drop it now. Oh, they ain't heard the best part. He gets this dish going from him, see? It looks like it's going to be a pushover. And he makes the big pitch. You know what it is? I warned you, Buck. He asked her to go to church. <laughs> That's him, the Salvation Kid. Okay, there's a lot of different ways to live. I happen to like mine. Sing us a hymn while we eat, huh? Well, since you brought the subject up, I might as well make the invitation general. Any of you boys who'd like to come down to my church next Sunday or any Sunday, you'll find a hearty welcome. I got a lousy voice for hymns. Besides, Sunday morning is sacred to my hangover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, uh, that may not be so funny someday. Take a look around you. One premature blast and you guys are done. You're finished. Be a little late then. Time to start thinking now. Buck, he run off with his mouth too much, Mr. Starling. I would go, but my clothes. I could not go to church like this. So shabby. Nothing shabby about your heart, Manuel. That looks fine, and everybody will recognize it. Any of the rest of you boys like to give it a try? The Salvation Kids in the pulpit. How about a collection? We love our church, but oh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, have you got a minute? I'm worried about these figures. Hiya, baby. What are you worrying about figures for? From what I can see, you've got nothing to worry about. All right, you kick that in over the fence. That's enough. Okay, Salvation. Bill, I hope there isn't going to be any trouble. <laughs> Don't worry. Buck and I have been building up to a tangle for a long time. Forget it. We're going to meet the deadline on the bid, all right? Uh-huh. You'll be down to the office tonight to make the final check, won't you? Yeah, I've got one stop to make first, but I'll see you around 10. Fine. And Bill, all in one piece. Promise? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi, water boy. Hi. Hi, so. Well, Pastor, you're displaying hidden talents. You're pretty handy with those tools. I should be. My father was a cabinet maker, old trade. Came in handy when I helped build my first church. I wish you'd remember a little more of it around his own house. Well, I've got the same kind of a problem. Dorothy can't clean house two minutes before she gets caught up in some old magazine. <laughs> well, what's so funny, Dorothy? A picture of Sophie. Stick a rose in her mouth and she'll look just like a Spanish dancer. Boy, oh boy, she does. Hey, Sophie. How about it? Come on, give us a dance. <laughs> you think I can't? Just give me some music. Here's all. Time's a-wasting. 
How about somebody in the muscle department helping me downstairs with some of this stuff? All right, here we go. You know, Bill, you'll be fixing up a place like this for yourself one of these days. You ever think of that? Yeah, I thought of it. Uh, what a spectacle I made of myself. I wonder what came over me. Maybe it's spring, Sophie. And you know, I think it's spring for Bill Starling, too. That brandy girl, you mean? Mm-hmm. Sophie, you've worked with her quite a while now. Is she? He could do better. Could he, Sophie? Oh, well, all right, he could do worse. A lot worse. Only don't let her know I said so. <laughs> Me, talking mush. I'm afraid to look. Bill, it checks. $241,520 and two cents. I don't know. I'm afraid we're too high. What do you say we take a long chance and knock off the two cents? <laughs> <laughs> you two sound happy. Don't tell me we're going to get the bids in on time. Sure we are, thanks to Superwoman. When interviewed, the team of Starling and Bradley said for publication, Oh, it ain't nothing. Besides, Sophie did all the brain work. There's a long, hard pull. Here's the certified check. Let's drink a toast. The best percolator. Vintage? Ten minutes ago. The success on the job. And the father's consolation when he finds out. <laughs> oh, jobs come and go. I'd like to drink to something a lot closer to my heart. A pair of the nicest young folks I know. And may they always be... Uncle Walt, drink your coffee. Madeline, I don't know what we'd have done without you the past weeks. And I might as well admit that Sophie wasn't the only one that had her doubts about hiring a competitor's daughter. But you're as honest as you're pretty. And that's really laying it on thick. Well, I'll drop this in the mail on my way home. Mm, on our way. We got a surprise for you. Oh, what do you know? The big bad wolf is pursuing me. And it's about time if anybody should happen to ask. Well, good night, kids. Tomorrow when we find out the Graves Construction Company is the low bidder on this job, we'll blow ourselves to a real celebration. I may need it. When Dad finds out that we got the job, he won't be fit to live with. <laughs> good night, Walt. Good night. Good night. How do you like it? Why, it's fine, but what's the surprise? What's for the stranger? The little girl's due in tomorrow. Of course, the folks still have a lot of work to do, but do you think it'll be all right? All right? Bill, it's perfect. I don't know what more any two people would want. Of course, you've got the furniture arranged all wrong. The furniture? Oh, uh, well, it's the best I could do. Men are such clumsy creatures. Now, let's see. I put the divan right here between the windows where you get better light and... Uh, Table in front. Uh, easy chair on that end, and uh, oh dear. Now what about it? I wish we could afford another easy chair. Oh, we don't need another chair. You know how newlyweds are. One will be funny. Uh, I, I just don't know what I'm going to do with these cleaning women. Look at that dirt. You better not let Sophie hear you say anything about dirt. She cleaned this place up like a district attorney. I guess she did. Bill, your people really did themselves proud, didn't they? They're grand people. Go along there. Now look, how about next Sunday? Wait a minute. We've got to have this out sometime. I... Bill, I believe in God. There's got to be a higher power. It's just that... Well, out of the job, you were talking to the men about sin and salvation. What's the matter with those words? Well, they're so... Uh, you know what they mean? I... Look, about sin first. Are you perfect, man? Now, now, wait. Think. Are you perfect in everything you think, say, and do? Of course not. Nobody is. I don't understand, Bill. What do you believe? I believe word for word what you just said. That nobody's perfect. But God won't settle for anything less than perfection. So everybody's sinners in God's eyes. Oh, Bill. No. You see... Sin isn't just theft and adultery and murder. It isn't only the little sins like greed and jealousy and deceit. It isn't only the things you do, it's just as much the things you don't do. Sin is every failure to live up to God's laws every second of every day. God's law? Bill, what do you know about God's law? How do you know what's right and what's wrong? Well, there's nothing mysterious about God's laws. 
They're set down in plain words in his commandments. They're written in every human conscience, yours, mine. Sin is, well, sin's the failure to reach the perfection God's laws demand. All right, if that's what you say sin is, then suppose we are sinners. Where does that leave us? Right smack in the middle of God's judgment. The wages of sin is death. Oh, I can't believe that. If God is good, I just can't believe that he'd condemn everybody before he's even born without giving him a chance to make good. It's just not fair. Well, that's only half the story. You see, God didn't leave us in the lurch. He sent his son into the world. I still don't see what that has to do with sin and salvation. Well, everything. Look, we're all sinners. We all owed God a tremendous debt. All right, Jesus paid that debt. He removed our guilt, suffered our punishment. We can go scot-free. We... we can, if we will. What do you mean, if we will? If we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. Accept his death as full and complete pardon for our sins. You really believe that, don't you, Bill? Yes, I do. I envy you. I hope someday I'll believe. But until I do believe, and believe in my heart that I do. Well, I'd be a hypocrite to say otherwise. And I... And what? You wouldn't love a hypocrite, would you? It's a wonder I remember to set this clock up with all that's been happening. I think I've been amazingly cool and reasonable about all this. Seven o'clock sharp. Eight o'clock, I see Bill. Mrs. William Starling. Mrs. Madeline Bradley Starling. Anybody could forget to turn out the light. Mrs. W. Howard Starling. W. H. Starling and wife. <laughs> I like that. Anybody could forget to change the alarm. Well, if I'm not a love sick schoolgirl, I never saw one. I'd forget my head if I were fast and on. Mr. Gray said I could stay home till the bids are open at noon, but I'd rather be out here. Bill, you don't suppose I fall in love with construction business, do you? I don't know, darling. But don't ever let a steam shovel come between us. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the blast. I'll be back in a few minutes. Bill, can't I go with you? I guess so. What you'll have to do is you're told in there. The tunnel's no place to get bright ideas. <laughs> you look kind of cute. Back out of here, boys. Stop holding this didn't blow. What do we do now, Bob? I take the detonator into town for fix. Can't wait for that. How far am I away? No, Buck. No fuse. You know what the boss say. Fuse too risky. But Salvation don't know won't bruise him. I'm back out of here. The fuse goes in. What's the matter, that thing kicking up again? Yes, the top holes, they don't blow. Where's Buck? He's in on the wall, boss. Buck! Hey, Buck, come here a second. Take it easy, executive. I'll be through in a couple of minutes. Boss, you better not go in. Buck, he's touching off those holes with open fuse. Open fuse? He is not. Stay here, Madeline, just in case. What's the idea of fusing that hole? You know the rules. 
Oh, you're going soft. We lose half a day fixing that detonator and we're behind schedule already. I'd rather lose time than men. Hack that fuse. Why? There's no risk here a couple of hot prayers won't fix. You heard me, Buck. Pull that fuse on the double. Big time operator, huh? I can back it up if I have to. I yank that fuse. Okay, big shot. Your schedule. Same old world. I didn't expect to see this again. How's the boss? He'll be all right. How's that? He'll be all right. Not much thanks to you. Well, rub it in, sister. I asked for trouble and I got it. I still think you were a dope, Salvation. You didn't have to go in there after me, you know? Skip it, Buck. Maybe I don't want to skip it. A guy don't risk his life for me every day, you know. You, you really practice those things you preach, don't you, Buck? Just don't want to lose a good foreman, that's all. Need you when we get on that viaduct job. Hey, what time is it? Must be a little after two. Yeah, Walt's down at the city hall right now. Let's get out of here. Get back to the office and get the good news. Buck, it was me. I told Bill about those fuses. Forget it, kid. You did me a good turn. Bill, that was a crazy thing to do. You know that. When the blast buried you, what did you think? I prayed. Prayed like I never did before. I wish I could. I do, Bill. Honestly. Are you really sure that's not what you're doing right now? Come on, driver, let's get out of here. I don't want to miss Walt's face when he gets back from the letting. Listen, you lugs. I don't know about you, but I know a sermon when one bounces off my head. We all got a date next Sunday morning. Anybody doesn't show up, and with a clean shirt, he won't feel much like work on Monday morning. What's holding Walt up? The bitch should have been read an hour ago. Oh. You were expecting maybe Spencer Tracy? Well, what's the matter with you two? Look at me, I'm not nervous. Then why do you have your jacket on backwards? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got butterflies in my stomach sitting around waiting for the verdict. I guess it's in the bag, though. You knock on wood when you say things like that. After the money we've been losing on that tunnel job, we've got to get this job. No, stop worrying, Sophie. Well, how'd we do, Walt? When do we start the job? We, uh, we didn't even enter our bid. But of course we did. Don't you remember? Last night, right at this desk. You signed the bid, I stamped the envelope, and I... What a time for a letter to get hung up in the mail. So it's the post office. You were with her last night. Did you see her mail it? Cut it out, Sophie. You know better than to ask a question like that. I know what I know. For five weeks, this girl has had her nose in our confidential figures. She typed out the bid. She offered to take the envelope. I'll mail it, Uncle Walter. It'll be no trouble at all. I'll be glad to mail it. So our bid is mysteriously delayed in the mail. And by some strange accident, that crooked father of hers will probably get our job. I warned you, Walter Graves. I told you this would happen. You must have been out of your mind to trust this girl. But Uncle Walt, you don't think oh, that... Oh, never mind, Madeline. It doesn't matter now, anyway. I guess I'd better call up the bank. Madeline. You know, so... A couple hours ago, I'd have said the same things you did. Now... 
I'm not so sure. Madeline, I guess you heard we took the job. I didn't think you'd go through with it. I'll order your new car tomorrow. I guess you've earned it, and I hope you enjoy it. But, Dad, I... Oh, what's the use? Telephone for you, Max. It's Mr. Hendricks at the bank. Madeline, won't you come downstairs for supper? You must eat something. Oh, Mother, you wouldn't know. I'll never be able to face him again. And I love him so much. You should have thought of that before. But, Mother, I didn't. Madeline, what's the matter with you? You were always so strong and sure of yourself. Nobody's that strong. I am self. Henrik says the bank is closing down on all of Walt's loans. Looks like you finished it. I suppose I ought to congratulate you. Hi, Chisler. Get out of the first ride in your new car. Get out of here. All of you, get out. I wish I could feel that way. You seem to have an anchor. I don't. I've done something wrong, something terribly wrong, and for the first time in my life, I feel helpless and alone. Well, maybe I can help you. You seem to be suffering more than me. You, uh, you seem to have a fear of something. I am afraid. That's why I'm running away. I can't seem to get hold of myself. That's the way I felt once. When I got the news that my wife was dead and my little girl Anna was alone in the old country, oh, I, I couldn't stand it no longer. I, I wanted to run away. You remember that Sunday? Yes. That's only one of the things I've done. Well, maybe we can find some good in it. When I woke up here in the hospital and everything come back to me, everything so bad, oh, I wanted to die. Then the pastor come, he talked to me, he tell me about Jesus. Just words, I think, to begin with. But then one day after the pastor had gone, and I was, I was reading my Bible, suddenly I feel something. I say, please, God, I can't go on any longer without help. I know I've been a failure. I've sinned many times, but I got a little girl in the old country. And she thinks I am wonderful. Please, God, for that little girl, I need help. And then a wonderful thing happened. It seemed like I saw his face. And he smiled at me. And like he took me by the hand and lifted me up. Oh, it was wonderful. I hope someday you can feel the, the strength of his hand. You see, I, I just wasn't big enough to get hold of myself like you say all alone. Someone else told me that once. But I didn't believe it then. Oh, it can happen to you, just like it happened to me. It's all here in this book. 
it's it says here <clears throat> it says come to me and i will give you rest that's what it says oh this is this is a wonderful book i don't need to be afraid of god anymore or trouble or, or anything else he forgive me everything i did in another place here it says the blood of jesus it wash me clean from all my sin that that's the love to forgive you everything you did what was wrong and then in another place here it's john 3:16 it says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life that's what it says his only son You'll understand me when I say this. If you've gotten this from lying here, I'm glad I ran over you. <laughs> I wish something would run over me. Maybe it has. You you have been so good to me. I I wish my little girl could know you. I'm going to meet her in a few minutes. I'd love to. Mr. Starling is coming in the car to take me to the station. Oh, I I'm awfully sorry. I will some other time, but I'm going away, you know. Well, promise me you will see her before you go, please. Oh, it won't be long now. No, it won't be long now. What's the matter with you? You're not coming down with stage fright, are you? Well, she was just a little baby. Maybe I won't know her. Maybe she won't know me. Uh, uh, I better go inside. You, you watch me. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, you stay right here. Everything's going to be all right. Like your mama you are. Your eyes, the way you hold your head. Oh, my <laughs> Mr. Starling, this is my little, this is my big girl. And so big she is. I know her. <laughs> we can go now. Hello, kitten. Come on, the car's over this way. You'll be home in a jiffy. Home? Oh, oh Mr. Starling, where we go? You think Mrs. Cooley has kept my room? No, I couldn't pay. Well, we'll just cruise around a little and see what we can see. Kitten, you're going to like it here, and here's going to like you. <laughs> there we are. Well, there's some folks I want you to meet. All right, everybody. Now, let's give them a real welcome. You all know the words. We are happy. 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 Such a wonderful welcome. I, uh, we thank you very much. Anna, say thank you. Thank you? Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Why, she's learning to speak English already. We'll put her in our school in a couple of days, and in a few months, you'll think she lived here always. Oh, that's good. And now, uh, we should thank the, uh, 
the master of this house. Uh, can we meet him? The master of this house? Yes. We'll introduce you to him right away. May I present the fine gentleman and his beautiful daughter, whose home this is. As long as they want to live here, this is their second home. Their first is in our hearts. Kay, you've got to talk to that girl. I tried to, but she wouldn't listen to me. Well, she'll listen to me. Maybe she will. She's been listening to you all her life. Now I, I hope you're satisfied. all these years when I should have spoken. Max, you and I were given the best thing in the world, a good Christian bringing up. And what have we done with it? What have we given our children? No church, no prayer, no faith, nothing. For the past 20 years, we've lived like a pair of heathen. We've been too busy with a thousand things to make sure our children got the one thing that counts. Oh, Max, we've made a miserable mess of things. We've made a fortune and lost everything that matters. Yes, I know. I wish we could live it over again. But it's too late. No, Max. It's never too late. Don't you remember what we used to hear? God help me, Kay, I forgot. Max, we can't forget any longer. Let's make a brand new start right now. Oh, God. We're sorry. Oh, Lord, forgive us. For Jesus' sake. Here, here, Pastor. None of your secrets. But let the rest of us in on it. Well, I have some good news for you. Our friend has consented to become the custodian of the church. He thinks it's a favor, but we know we'll have the best-kept church in the state. But he still doesn't know the most important part of his job, which is, well, I guess we all realize how much he has meant to this congregation. And if we ever begin to slip back into our old ways, there he'll be before our eyes, a constant reminder, a living symbol. And now, before we break up, God, who has been so good to us, bless this place. Bless the hands that gave their labor, the friends that showed their love, and the souls that will make it home. God, give it grace. In Jesus' name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Dad, how did you know I'd be here? I didn't. But I'm awfully glad you are. Madeline, we can't run away from this. We've got to go up there and face it. I know it's going to be tough, but 
That's exactly what I intended to do. I heard it too. I've come to... Thanks, Dad. I'll be all right. You probably all know, but I've got to tell you myself. I was going to run away like a thief, and... And now, thanks to God, I... I see things as they really are. You know what this is. Well, I, I didn't mail it. I forgot. Maybe I had a good excuse for forgetting, but there's no reason for me to be a coward and not admit what I've done. There's no use saying I'm sorry, either. Oh, why do you all stand there looking kind? I know how it sounds. I don't expect you to believe me. Nobody in this world would believe me. I believe you, and I ought to be horsewhipped for what I did to you. I guess I should be, too. How oh, can you forgive me, Uncle Walt? I've ruined your business, and I... You haven't ruined anybody's business. Tonight, when I found out what Madeline had done, or rather, what I thought she had done, I decided to assign my contract over to you. It's your job, Walt. We'll draw up the papers in the morning. I know I don't deserve your forgiveness, but, well, I'm going to ask for it. Bless you, Max. And if that, uh, that invitation is so good, well, I'll see you Sunday. We'll be glad to see you, Max. Thank you, Pastor. Hey, look at that moon. Shame to go home right away. You know, I practically had to propose to you. So now I guess I'll have to ask you for a date. Any particular time? You know, next Sunday morning. And every Sunday morning for a long, long time. Oh, such good people. Soon you will love them. Soon you will speak their language good. And the first words in it I want you to know are these. Now, you say what I say. For God. For God. So loved the world. So loved the world. That he gave. That he gave. His only begotten son. He did. 